And through the word found in 1 Corinthians 15.10, I give you the title of our sermon, We Live by the Grace of God. So may we understand the word of God given us today on this first Lord's Day of November. Today's scripture reading refers to God's grace not once, but is repeated three times in this one Bible verse. And this is Paul's confession. And he says, by the grace of God, I am what I am. And he continues to say, his grace toward me did not prove vain, but the grace of God with me. This is Paul's confession. In other words, Paul knew that his life was one that began, progressed, and ended only by the grace of God. So Paul's life was a life in which he knew that God directed it. And God directed Paul through God's grace. And I believe that we also live our lives by the great grace of God. Please believe this. When we come into God's grace, then the shadows of our worry disappear. And instead of frustration and anxiety, we receive true peace. Within God's grace, we also receive pure joy, and may we believe in this. And since this is so, we must hold on to grace. So then what is the truth about grace that we should know? We must know the truth about grace so that we never let go of it. First, We are all chosen by the grace of God. Galatians 1.15, Paul also confesses this. But when he who had set me apart even from my mother's womb and called me through his grace was pleased. This passage tells us that God's grace even preceded our birth. Even within our mother's womb, God's grace was there. And God's grace, through this, he chose us before all time. And he chose us to save us. And this is what we call predestination. And it is no coincidence that you and I are sitting here worshiping together. And it is not because someone asked you to come to church or because you happened to pass by this church that you came here. It is because before we were even born, God already called us through his grace. So together we are here, worshiping in God's church. This is not a coincidence. Even though people may call you to come, that is not why you are here. You must know this. But it is through what? It is through the grace of God that you are here. It is grace alone. So I want you to believe that God's grace chose you before the ages. And he has called you in his time. And that is why 
You are in this space today. That is why you are at church today. Please understand this. So God's grace, through it, he calls each and every one of us by name. But we must also know that God's grace not only precedes all time, but also all space. In the Old Testament, how did the Israelites conquer and settle in the land of Canaan and then drive out the seven tribes who possessed this land before the Israelites? What was it that allowed the Israelites to conquer this vast land of Canaan? We must know that it was only through the grace of God. And we find this in Exodus 23, 28. God says this, And I will send hornets ahead of you, that they may drive out the Hivites, the Canaanites, and the Hittites before you. So it is not because the Israelites went to war and fought and won, but because of God's grace, God sent out hornets to drive out the seven, seven tribes who once lived in Canaan. So we must understand how great the grace of God is. And in the same way, God's grace leaps into the space of our lives. God's grace resolves the problems that we have. And when you have received his grace, you must trust that he will lead you to the place of resolution. Please believe this. That is how great God's grace is and how great it works in our lives. It is this grace that came to us even before we were in our mother's womb. It is grace that precedes our problems and resolves it before we can even lift a finger. How great is this? Therefore, as long as we are in God's grace, we don't have to worry about anything. Please believe this truth and embed it deeply in your hearts. So what is another truth about grace? Number two, God's grace moves ahead of our faith. That is how God's grace works. So God called us and he has saved us to go to heaven. And we know this through the Bible verse found in Ephesians 2.8. It says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. So grace even comes before our faith. First, we receive grace, and then we are saved through faith. And God says this is his gift to us. So there are three things that we have for salvation. Grace, salvation, through faith. Until now, we have simply known that salvation is achieved through faith in God. But if we look closely at Ephesians 2.8, we know that for by grace, we have been saved through faith. In other words, this means if it weren't for God's grace, we could not have faith. And without faith, then we cannot have salvation. So this is the formula for our salvation. It is we receive grace and then faith and then salvation. We must know it is by God's grace, that we believe in God. 
and because of grace that we believe in the blood of Jesus Christ that redeems. And because of grace that we believe in the words of the Old and New Testaments in the Bible. This is all through grace. It is only through grace that we can have faith. And if God's grace leaves us, no matter how much we want to believe, we cannot without his grace. So let us all remember this. And every day, may we seek God's grace so that our faith will not be shaken or weakened. There are times when we are filled with anxiety, worry, and fear. And there may be times when great problems come into our lives. But at that time, remember, our faith and salvation is all tied in by God's grace that he gives us as a free gift. So believe in this truth. I bless this upon you in the name of the Lord. With God's grace, everything in your lives will be peaceful. And number three, what is the truth about God's grace? Only by the grace of God can we pass through judgment that will occur in these end times. So grace is our master key in our lives. Genesis chapter 6 tells us about Noah and the flood. It tells us that in the midst of sin and violence that cover the entire world, God judged the earth by water. It was because the world overflowed with sin that it was judged and punished. But at this time, how did Noah and his family alone pass through this judgment of the flood? The reason is also this. It is because Noah found grace in the eyes of God. This is found in Genesis 6, verses 7 and 8. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. So because of fallen mankind, even beasts and birds, they were all destroyed, but only Noah, he was the only one that found grace. And Noah, he didn't pass this time of judgment because he was perfect, but it was only because of God's grace that he was saved. But in Matthew 24, 37, it warns us that the last days will be just like the days of Noah. If we see this world today, sin overflows greatly. We see it is just like the days of Noah. So, we must also live like Noah. We must also receive this grace like Noah to pass through these end times. The higher the level of sin is, the more grace we must receive. When we receive God's grace, even though sin is great, our grace will be greater. So if grace is overflowing, then sin in this world cannot overcome us. We will overcome this sin through God's grace. And that is why the Bible says this in Psalm 31, 19. 
it says that we must receive a great amount of grace. Psalm 31, 19. It says, How, oh, how great is your grace, which you have put in store for your worshipers, and which you have made clear to those who had faith in you before the sons of men. So this verse is saying that God is storing up his grace for us, his believers, his worshipers. And as he stores it up for us, we must receive it. I bless this upon you in the name of the Lord. You must receive great grace in these end times. And in John 1.16, the Bible says, For of his fullness we have all received, and grace upon grace. So we have to know that grace is given to us and it is also stored for us so that we can pass through the end time judgment. These two verses collectively tell us it is by the grace of God that we begin our life on this earth. And it is by the grace of God that our faith is maintained today because he is holding on to us tightly through his grace. And we also see that it is through God's grace that enables us to pass through the last judgment and be saved through his gift of grace to us. In other words, without God's grace, we cannot live even one single day in this world. So we must receive God's grace with the grateful heart, a receiving heart. This word grace in Greek is charis, charis. And charis means free. And it means gift without cost. So grace is a free gift from God. In many places in the Bible, we find the words God's grace and the word gift combined in the same verse. Because grace is a gift. Romans 5.15 tells us, Much more did the grace of God and the gift by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abound to the many. So many have received this gift by our Lord Jesus Christ. And it is a free gift. How great is this? And Ephesians 3, 7 of which I was made a minister according to the gift of God's grace, which was given to me according to the working of his power. Again, it says grace is a gift from God. And Ephesians 4, 7 says, But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. So these verses continuously tell us that grace is a gift from God, from our Christ. And we know in this world that we like gifts, don't we? And today I received a gift and it made me happy and there is no reason for me to receive this gift. So Why are gifts given and why do we like it? We like it because it's free and it's because that person likes us. So we receive the gift even if we do nothing. That's why it's so wonderful to have. So God's grace is great like this. 
It's not because we did such great work or we're such great people. It's not this reason why we, we receive God's grace. Even though we don't deserve it, we are lacking, we are weak. We believe in God, so God gives us his grace. This is how great God is. So why wouldn't you want to receive it? Receive God's grace. It's difficult in your lives right now. You're going through hardships. You're suffering. You cry. Then receive God's gift that is free, his grace. And then your hurting heart, your frustrated mind, your worries, your anxieties, God will cover them and he will heal you. Please believe this. Please receive God's grace at this time. So when we do this, when we receive God's gift as a free gift, then what should our attitude be when we receive his grace? Yes, we must believe in him and receive this grace with an open heart. But then our attitude after we receive it is even more important. Why? Because if our attitude concerning this grace is bad, then we can lose it. We will let go of it. And that is why Paul confessed in 2 Corinthians 6, 1, the following. He says, and working together with him, we also urge you not to receive the grace of God in vain. We receive God's grace as a gift. We believe well. But there are people who receive God's grace in vain. And the Bible tells us not to do this. Dear saints, we live our lives of faith, gaining the knowledge of the word. And we pray continuously. And we devote ourselves to the church. But what we also have to remember is that with this word we received, with the prayers we lift up to God and the devotion we give to him, we must have a good attitude towards God. And that is the truth also in this world. Sometimes we hear people say this. They say that person or family was ruined because of money. When they were poor, they were happy. But when they became rich, they were ruined in an instant. But is it true? Was it really the money that ruined those people? Money is an inanimate object. It is not alive. It is without personality. Therefore, is it accurate to say that a person's life was ruined because of money? No. Why do people become ruined? It is because of a person's attitude towards money that could ruin their life, not the money itself. So our attitude is so important. When a shower of rain pours down from the sky, and if the spout of a jar is positioned upward, then that jar will soon be full of water. It will fill up in no time because it is positioned to receive that water from the sky. But no matter how big a jar may be, if it is positioned upside down, it cannot collect any water no matter how much rain pours down. How can you receive rain when you are not in the position to receive it? 
In other words, in order to receive grace, we must be in the right position and posture. Just like when rain falls down, we must be in the right position to receive it. It is our attitude. When we receive God's grace, we must have the right attitude to receive it. Even though we believe in God, we must have the right attitude towards God, or else how can grace enter us? Psalm 72, verse 6 says this, May he come down like rain upon the mown grass, like showers that water the earth. What is this talking about? About God's grace. If you believe, if you have the right attitude, it will come down. Grace will come down like showers. And Ezekiel 34, 26 says, And I will make them and the places around my hill a blessing. And I will cause showers to come down in their season. They will be showers of blessing. So this this shower is grace. The showers of blessing is God's grace towards us. And in this way, we must believe that God's grace is the great rain that we need. So do we have the attitude to receive it? Are we in the position to want it? If God's grace pours down abundantly, but our hearts are not in the position to receive it, but are in the position of this world and not towards heaven, then we cannot receive a single drop of grace. And that is what is meant by receiving God's grace in vain in 2 Corinthians 6.1. As long as you are ready to receive, and are in the right position and attitude, God will fill you with grace according to the size of your heart. Because of the attitude of your heart, the attitude of your faith, you can gain grace and blessings that will lead to peace and joy. But there are so many people who do not have the attitude to receive. There may be even some sitting here today But right now, we are all sitting with grace. I can see it in your faces. You are filled with grace as God is pouring it down upon you. So through this worship, believe that you are receiving God's grace. And even though the sizes may be different, you are all receiving it. So then, what is the right attitude we must have to receive God's grace? Again, Apostle Paul teaches us in Colossians 3, verses 1 and 2, and let us find it together. If you have the Black Bibles, it is in the New Testament, page 326, Colossians 3, verses 1 and 2. In your Black Bibles, New Testament, page 326, Colossians 3, verses 1 and 2. So God's grace is falling upon us right now. So if you want to receive it all, then we must know this verse and believe it. Colossians 3, 1 through 2, let's read it together. Begin. If then you have been raised up with Christ, keep seeking the things above where Christ is. Seated seated at the right hand of God, set your mind on the things above, not on the things that are on earth. Amen. So in the end, it depends on where the direction of our thoughts are and where our minds are headed. If you turn your heart towards heaven, you will receive the reign of grace and you will be able to live by the power of God's grace. But if you turn your heart towards the world, no matter how much God's grace desires to find you and go to you. You cannot receive anything because you are already rejecting it through your attitude when you say it's too hard. 
when you don't want to receive it, then how can His grace go to you? No matter how much God wants to pour upon these blessings upon you of grace, it is hard to find you because you are rejecting it. Romans 8 speaks of the consequences of the direction and attitude of our fleshly thoughts. So in this world, we all get wet when it rains. So there are those who cover up the rain and those who receive it. And in Romans 8, verses 5 through 6, it also expresses the same condition. It says, For those who are according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who are according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For the mind set on the flesh is death, but the mind set on the Spirit is life and peace. In this way, the things we think about leads the direction of the pursuits we have in our lives. If we idolize the things of this world and are hostile towards God and His will, how can we accept God's grace? That is why what we think about in our hearts, that's why it is so important. But if we keep our spiritual thoughts towards heaven, you will receive God's grace in full. And when you receive God's grace, you will gain peace and happiness and gain eternal life. And you will walk away from the path of the world. You will walk away from darkness. You will walk away from anxiety and fear and worry. So we must keep our spirits with God. We must look towards heaven. And you must believe that only God can give you the true peace you desire. And only God can give you the true comfort you need. And through that faith in God, God will give you all the showers of blessings, all the grace that you can store up, and even more. Please believe this. Our History of Redemption Bible Seminar has come to an end through the grace of God. Don't think it is completely ended. It has not, because our mission to save souls has only just begun. Please believe this. So from now on, let us keep our hearts and minds in heaven towards God. And in this world, no matter what happens, even though we may become worried and saddened, keep your heads towards God, towards heaven. Because God's grace will shower you with blessings and it will chase away all your fears and your worries in your life. And we know that the work that God is most pleased in is the work of evangelism. So let us leave our worries behind and let us do what God desires of us evangelize. Let us not stop in doing His work. So those people that we met yesterday, let us keep them in our prayers. Let us continue to call them. Let us call them to attend our Lord's Day worships, our Bible studies, and one person from our seminar is here today. So as you keep the positions of your heart's fixed towards heaven daily, daily towards God and His Word, you will live a prosperous and blessed life in the fullness of God's grace daily. May you believe in this, and it will happen. I bless this upon you in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Dear loving Father God, We know in our lives, if it is not for your grace, 
We could not even withstand one day in this world, and we confess this to you. In your grace, Father, you have called us even before we were born, and through your grace, even though we face hardships, you hold on to us tightly. And even in the end times, when it is time for this world to be judged, we know it is only through your grace that we will pass this judgment every day. Like the showers of rain that fall from heaven, may we open up our spiritual hearts and have the attitude to receive your grace in this world, even though things may happen that we don't desire for it to happen, and it may cause us pain and grief. We know that if we position our hearts towards you, you will take care of us through the outpour of your grace. And all the sufferings that we have, you will take it and replace it with happiness and peace. And through your grace, we know that it comes before us and it guards us and protects us and it gives us peace, and we know that we will receive it throughout our lives as we continually have the attitude to receive your word, to receive your love and your grace. We thank you and pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us give glory to God.